Top Trader is brought to you by Sanlam iTrade and powered by Pyrrhus, now with a new Iris trading platform. One hundred and sixty-five million rand in value traded, fifty-four million shares traded. A battle for two hundred and fifty thousand rand. Two thousand three hundred and forty-four shares successfully executed. One thousand and eighty-eight trading hours. One hundred thirty-six trading days. One hundred and twenty-six companies and ETFs traded. Eight apprentice traders and one ultimate top trader. Welcome to the final of Top Trader 2012. Coming to you live from the CNBC Africa studios in Santon, Johannesburg. Now, before we get things started, CNBC Africa is live on Twitter throughout tonight's show. You can send us any questions or comments for the contestants or mentors. That's throughout tonight's proceedings to at Top Trader 2012. No, that's not correct. Correct. That's at Top Trader TV. That is our handle. And of course, remember to use the hashtag hashtag Top Trader 2012. So the hashtag. Top Trader 2012 and I handle Top Trader TV. Well, to guide the contestants and hone their trading skills, we brought on board experienced mentors who covered everything from Trading 101 to technical analysis, mastering the art of day trading, of course, including stop losses and the likes, offshore investing, commodities, currencies, and exchange traded products. So tonight we welcome mentors David Shapiro from Sasvin, Ashraf Mohammed from Ascension Properties, and of course, Narina Fisser from Nedbank Capital. And tonight, we also have our guest mentors, Gerard Lumpen from Sunlam iTrade. We've also got Mike Barnes from Securities Africa, Gerard LaRue from Imari SP Reed, and of course, Warwick Selsa was also joining us as a technical analysis uh, from WorldSkills. And of course, we'd also like to welcome our Vice Chairman of the ABN Group, Mr. Rakesh Wahi, Mrs. Saloni Wahi, and of course, Managing Director of the ABN Group, Roberta Naidu. Now, as you might notice, we've got seven of the eight contestants here. We've got one seat open. We're waiting for Hoitze. He has been unfortunately delayed, but hopefully will be joining us later on in the show. As far as I know, he is going to be able to make it here tonight. So welcome to everyone. Let's get uh, things started. Narina, um, I mean, it's been, an, you know, what a, what a six months it's been. The competition has been tough. Uh, three have made it into the top three. And of course, the uh, nerves are high tonight. But I think first off, Let's recap, you know, how the competition has worked over the past six months and I suppose more importantly, how the rules evolved over the past <laughs> six months. Most definitely, Sam. Yes, it's been a competition of lots of changes and you know how they say the more things change, the more they stay the same. But in this instance, the contestants, all eight of them, started with 100,000 Rand in virtual cash. This they traded on the Perisys Iris trading platform, which allowed them to experience what real trading feels like, but without having to risk real money, either their own or, of course, one of the sponsors. Um, they started out being allowed to trade in the top, um, the all shares on the on the all share index. So that's about 165 odd shares that they were allowed to trade in. And they were quite fortunate that they didn't have to pay any trading costs during this period. But the first four months really was the important period in which to, to teach them some of the, not just the basic skills, but the important skills in being um, a top trader. After four months, we reached the point where it was important to say goodbye to our first contestant. And it really was unfortunate that our first contestant also happened to be our only female contestant. Oliver Tosin was such a, a brilliant performer and such a good contestant. But unfortunately, this time round, it was just not meant to be. I think it's probably because the world stage is waiting for you um, to play a bigger role. Next in line, after Oliver Tosin leaving us, was Zahir. Um, and Zahir was the, was the next one to, to go and actually return to the real world and start plying his trade there. But during this time also, we had a number of um, immunity challenges and competitions that were running. And the first and most important of these immunity challenges actually afforded Stephen an immunity tie, which turned out to be quite an important and valuable investment for him at the time, because this allowed him to probably stay on in the competition, I must admit, Stephen, quite a bit longer than you otherwise would have. <laughs> but I think, to be fair, um, you know, the guys really 
really up their game. They learned a lot and I think probably the biggest change came after four months when we introduced trading costs and realistic trading volumes to the competition. At the same time also we allowed them to then start trading in exchange traded products and here it was very important to see who was able to adapt to these changes in the rules because we needed to start moving the contestants closer to real life and real trading con conditions. But by then we were left with five of our contestants and as Stephen was saved once by the immunity time, the next time round he did have to leave and he was eliminated under the new rules. Um, and then there was a bit of a shock because in our next episode we actually had a double whammy when we lost both Huitze and Jared um, and to take us down to our final three contestants as we see them here tonight. We've got Promise, Saul and Gary who ended up being the final three contestants and tonight is the night where we will find out who of these three will be crowned the top trader of 2012. Well, we also had uh, a viewers competition and uh, that was to pick who or predict who would be in the top three. So I'd like to call in Karat Lampen from Sunlam I Trade. And Karat, you're going to come up and introduce what the competition was all about. So tell us who the winner of that is. But firstly, I mean, what are your thoughts on how top trade has been over the past six months? I think it was great to be involved with this program. Um, I think it was a lot of fun. Um, it was exciting. Um, it showed young people that they can get involved, uh, there is learning experiences that you can get and I think it was nice with working with young people and also I think the educational part of it, not only for the contestants, mm -hmm. uh, which I'm sure got some good education out of it, but also your viewers got some very good con uh, uh, experience out of it and it was very nice for us also because they were using the Perisys IRA system which is also the system that we use for our clients, our yeah. real trading clients. So of course so you talk great. about viewers and one viewer is a lucky viewer because they predicted the top three correctly. Uh, so tell us yes. a little bit about that. It's a competition we ran on Facebook, um, on uh, uh, Sanlam Artrade's Facebook to predict the top three and uh, it was very interesting because uh, not many people got the three right. I must say, if it was a popularity contest, uh, Jarrett and Khoetsi would have made a, a big impact on it. They were very popular in the predictions. Uh, but in the end, uh, we did get a few predictions and we had a lucky draw. And Stembili Dlamini won the prize. And I'd like Stembili to come up. It's a 10,000 rand course, which I hope will get you uh, into the next top trader competition. Um, it's got three different courses from Share Direct. It's worth 10,000 Rand. Congratulations. Well, well done. Let's just take that mic quickly, Karat, if you don't mind. So we just have a little a word. I mean, You've watched as a viewer at Simbili, um, the competition. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about your views. I mean, has this been useful for you as a, as a viewer? Yes, it has been. Um, I had been interested for some time and just from watching and I just grew into the shares and just selling and being a trader. I was just taken aback and I thought, let me just try it out. We need the mic there. <laughs> so, and I thought, let me just try it out and see. And I watched throughout and I saw these guys sweating it out, trying to decide what's best for what, getting money. Uh, yeah. So you're not running away, you, you're inspired by this. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm going in. Great. I want this. <laughs> well, we hope you make it into Top Trader 2013. Yes, yes I hope so too. Great. Well, well done. Thank you. <laughs> Well, there we go. We've got uh, Promise, Gary and Saul in the top three. So let's find out a little bit about the contestants who made it this far. I'm going to be the next top trader because I'm passionate about markets and I'm confident in my abilities. I know I'll be good in this competition and I know I'll be good in trading throughout the rest of my life. I'm the next top trader because I have the personality and the, the strength of character to last through this, um, this rigorous six month period. I'm, I'm not going to go as far as to say I am the next top trader but I'm, I'm, I have aspirations to go pretty far and the reason being is, I don't know, I think purely from the standpoint of what I'm studying, I'm not scared of research, I'm not scared of work, I'm not scared to sleep two hours to do what it takes. 
Well, we hope that all eight contestants go out into the real world and have successful careers in the financial world. And we also hope that one day they'll end up on CNBC Africa, giving us advice on where to invest our money. Now, to give them a taster of what that's like, we set up a fun challenge. Let's take a look. We're here at FCC, or the Final Control Center at the CNBC Africa Studios, and I'm about to explain to the contestants what their final challenge is for session three. Now, this is a fun challenge, but it's very important if they're all wanting to become professional traders. So, with that being said, guys, and lady, the challenge is I'm going to give you half an hour to do some research. I hope you've all seen CNBC Africa interviews, you've all seen people being interviewed on uh, the investment strategy. So that's what I'm going to ask you. I'm going to ask you about what's driving market sentiment and where people should put their money if they want to invest in equities. Stuart Lohman is executive producer for CNBC Africa's market shows and picking the kind of analyst that can add value to a story is his trade. Contestants had two hours to prepare before they were put in the hot seat. Getting a good grasp of the day's market moving factors was to prove a handful task for some. The fun challenge is quite interesting. It's one for you to speak to a person off camera. Then I think the minute the camera is there and you know there are lots of people listening to you, a bit of nerves kick in. First in the fire was Saul and the Cape Town trader hit his nerves well. What are the key factors that you're seeing driving market sentiment today? The main factors is um, when the Fed spoke earlier, they spoke, um, they said that the economy in America is looking really down. So they, they made the dollar um, decrease in value, which helped Euro, um, the euro increase, which has helped gold as well. Stephen, now immunity tie owner and not particularly worried. What is your view on the key factors driving this positive mood in the markets? Well, I'd say in general over the past uh, you know, few weeks, maybe even months, uh, nothing really has been driving the market. The market has been, in fact, anything but driven. Living up to his name, Promise was his usual cool, but not always calm. Of momentum, I don't know. Hey, um, um, I've, I've seen just the top 40 is up a little bit, I mean, by half, by half a percent. Um, um, our uh, banks are down a bit, I mean, probably on news of the Barclays. Uh, um, <laughs> geez, uh, that challenge wasn't fun. <laughs> that wasn't fun. Like, they didn't tell me that this was shark-infested waters. Hey, hang on. Hey, have, here's this fun challenge. No, they lied. They called it, it's like the credit crunch. What crunch? It's not credit crunch. People are losing their jobs. It's not like a cereal. The rose amongst the thorns, Oluwa Torsen, clearly not a damsel in distress, brought pace and energy. I think we can already see a, a bit of a reaction based on that already. I think it's going to help. And finally, the uneasiness and the, the sharp and volatile movement is going to ease off a bit. I think it's going to help the market. With his laid back style and nonchalance, Gary was on the ball. Samantha, I wouldn't say so. I mean, we've just got, uh, we've got more, more news coming out on the Eurozone sort of um, I don't think it's a decisive decision. It's not going to change anything drastically today. It's sort of, as everyone's always said, we're kicking the can down the road. Shortage of opinions is not something you can accuse Hoite of. This interview proved just that. I think from my analysis that the, that the gold stocks that are pushing this, this run on the resource sector are, are mostly driven by the lower dollar rates at the moment. So here so up close that television is not as easy as it looks. Would that mean that you're comfortable with the, the health of the local consumer, the state of the South African consumer? Is that one of the key reasons that you're buying retailers here? Well, not, not necessarily, but I'd, I'd say that, that, it, that it's safer than, than uh, or the South African market is, is it's a, it, there's, a, there's a better situation, it's a safer situation than what's happening in Europe at the moment. Wrapping up the tale was Jared. The Cape Tonian had already won a challenge before and delivered confidently. Got bad headlines the one day and the market slips back and today it's, we're seeing positive trading on the markets. I mean, what is, has anything changed? Uh, well, the market's open flat because of investors just not knowing where to go. They absolutely have no sentiment to go into the markets. Um, at the moment, they all think fleeing out the market is the correct um, move. It was now up to Stuart Lohman, executive producer for CNBC Africa and I, to pick who effectively communicated and confidently qualified their responses during the interviews. After much deliberation, we have a winner. From an overall point of view, I think you guys did very well. Promise, 
I think you developed, but you lost me with I don't know. I think that was your first answer. <laughs> Which I but you, you were confident, but I, I wasn't convinced about the, you know the, the answers that you were giving. You kind of were jumping a bit all over the place, and I wasn't convinced about the story that you were trying to tell. So here, I felt you were very nervous to start with. You sort of developed, got better, but then you got more nervous again towards the end. Jared, so. a little bit nervous. <laughs> a little bit nervous there, but you were good. Sorry. So Oluwatosi and Sol, please stand forward. We thought you guys were great because you stood out because you were energetic, yeah. you were engaging, you were telling a story. There can only be one winner and the winner is... Sol! Sol. Yeah. Well done Sol! <laughs> well there we go, I hope you guys are better equipped now at this stage after a few more months trading to do that. Uh, and of course, back to the matter of hand. But before we do that, Koitze, welcome. Good to have you with us. Glad you made it. And of course, uh, as I said, all three of the contestants uh, deserve to be in the competition tonight, have made it into the top three, Promise, Saul and Gary. And how the competition worked was they were given 25,000 Rand in cash. That's real money. That's to go out into the real world and try and make a profit. I suppose that's what trading's all about. Absolutely. And the winner of tonight's competition is going to be the person who made the most profit. So that's who the winner is going to be tonight. But let's take a quick break. Before we do, remember we're on Twitter throughout the show tonight. You can send us your questions or comments for any of the contestants or mentors throughout the show. And don't forget our Twitter handle uh, at TopTraderTV and the hashtag, hashtag TopTrader2012. Let's take a break. More Top Trader after this.